The Discovery of the Constellations In an attempt to understand the will of the gods, the priests of Mesopotamia began to study the stars. As observatories, they used temples on top of pyramid-like structures called ziggurats, which gave them an unobstructed view of the heavens. Given their long-term measurements, which they recorded on clay tablets, combined with institutional backing, they are often regarded as the first professional astronomers in world history. Perhaps as early as 2500 BC, these astronomers grouped stars into still familiar constellations, including Taurus, Scorpio, Sagittarius, and so on. We find the first complete list of the Mesopotamian zodiac on a tablet called the Mul Apin, which is dated to about 1000 BC, and which contains about all modern zodiac signs, as we shall see. The Mulapin is also the first text to explicitly describe the zodiac as, quote, the path of the moon, since the moon passes through all the zodiac constellations as it orbits around the earth. Obsessed by their findings, the heavenly bodies feature often in Mesopotamian art. And in this lecture, you'll learn to recognize their depiction of the moon, Venus, the Pleiades star system and various constellations. And finally, we'll also take a look at the beautiful Dendara zodiac from Egypt, from the 1st century BC. So, we have a lot to get to. Let's start. Hey, good to see you. This is Stefan, author of In Search of the Sublime. On this World History Channel, we'll trace humanity's relentless pursuit of scientific truth, moral excellence and enlightenment. You'll meet anyone from Mesopotamian astronomers and Indian yogis to Greek philosophers and Enlightenment scientists. And you'll meet them firsthand using primary sources, giving you valuable insights that transcend the surface level understanding you get on other channels. So go check it out for yourself. Let's start. The first cigarettes date to the 4th millennium BC, predating the Egyptian pyramids by perhaps a thousand years. An early example is the Anu ziggurat of Uruk, of which only the ruins remain today. It was dedicated to Anu, the god of heaven, and it was topped by the so-called White Temple, of which nothing remains, unfortunately. In their mythology, the ziggurats were conceptualized as mountains connecting heaven and earth. In fact, some ziggurats were literally referred to as Dar Anki, meaning the bond between heaven, An, and earth, Ki. The most famous ziggurat was built in Ur, during the reign of King Ur-Namu, in the 21st century BC. The first level of the ziggurat still stands, and in its original state, the entire stepped structure is estimated to have had a height of around 30 meters, significantly lower than the largest pyramids, but still an impressive feat. In the past, every ziggurat was topped by a temple containing statues of the gods inside. The top of the ziggurat was also ideal for astronomical observations, since it gave an unobstructed view of the sky. From here, teams of Sumerian priests maintained an unbroken watch of the night sky. We see the Mesopotamian interest in the stars everywhere in their art as we shall see many times during this lecture. Here, for instance, we see a clay imprint made by a cylinder seal, which is depicted on the right. If you roll these cylinders on the clay, you get these beautiful images. Depicted here are the two heroes, Gilgamesh and Enkidu, who are about to slay the monster Humbaba. But important for us here today are the symbols above them. To the left we see a crescent moon, which near the equator on Earth appears on the bottom. And to the right of it we see seven stars, which represent the Pleiades star system, which you can see here on the top right. And here another cylinder seal impression with again the moon and the Pleiades. Early on, Sumerian astronomers grouped stars into constellations. And it is possible that some of the zodiac constellations go back as far as 
3200 BC, when we start to see depictions that would later become associated with the zodiac. Let's study an example. Take for instance the cylinder seal impression that you see here below, from 2500 BC. On this piece of clay you see a drawing that is also depicted on the right. To start with, notice that we see the Sun, the Moon and Venus depicted as a set, which occurs here and also here, with Venus always depicted as a six or eight pointed star. On the upper left we see a hunter with a bow, who aims at a horned animal, an image we would later recognize as Sagittarius and Capricorn. And in the middle of the upper band we also see a scorpion, possibly referring to Scorpio, and below it we see a lion, Leo, eating a bull, Taurus. On the top half we also see a goddess standing on a lion, with what could be weapons on her shoulder, if we compare this image to later images. And this could be Inanna, who would later become associated with the planet Venus. A similar case can be made by the famous Seal of Ada, perhaps the most famous cylinder seal from 2300 BC. Here we see the sun god Shamash, who cuts its way with a knife through a twin peak mountain named Mashu, where he was believed to rise every day from the underworld. And by the way, notice the solar radiation coming off his shoulders. And here we see the Venus goddess Inanna, this time for sure with weapons sticking out of her shoulders. And we also see a lion, an eagle, two later constellations, and also the god Enki, with streams of water and fish coming from his shoulders, which would later become the constellation Aquarius, which is depicted similarly by the Greeks. And here I have one of my own cylinder seals. As you can see, it is a tiny piece of stone with carvings in it, with a hole in its center. And if you stick a stick in this hole, you can easily roll it on top of clay. And here you see the image that this particular cylinder seal produces. This one from the Assyrians from around 900 BC. Here we see a six pointed star, which is Venus. We see again the crescent moon, and then we see what appears to be a regular hunting scene. But it might as well be Sagittarius and Capricorn. And in the middle we strangely also see a fish, which could be related to the constellation Fishes, or it could be a fish from the Aquarius constellation. As said before, in those earliest images, we're not sure whether they are actually depictions of the constellations or whether it is all just an accident. But we do know that the Mesopotamians were at least interested in the stars at that time, as we also have a list of 25 stars from this time and even a number of fragmentary horoscopes, which also include references to the planets. And we'll discuss these in the next lecture. On this boundary stone from the 12th century BC, the link between these images and the constellations becomes solid. Here we clearly see Scorpio, we see the bull Taurus, we see the lion Leo, and the goatfish Capricorn. Interestingly, the Greeks also depicted Capricorn as a half goat, half fish. And also the serpent, the Hydra. We find the first complete list of the Mesopotamian zodiac on a tablet known as the Mullah Pin from around 1000 BC. And this text also explicitly calls the zodiac, quote, the path of the moon, since the moon passes through the constellation of the zodiac in its orbit around the earth. We read on this tablet, the gods who stand in the path of the moon, through whose region the moon in the course of a month passes and whom he touches are the Pleiades, that star system that we discussed before, then the bull of heaven, Taurus, the shepherd of heaven, Orion, the old man, Perseus, the crook, Origa, the great twins, Gemini, the crab, Cancer, the lion, Leo, and then the furrow, 
which in the same text is also associated with the grain goddess Shala. And this constellation later turned into Virgo. And then the scales, Libra, the scorpion, then a figure called Pabilsak or Sagittarius, then the goatfish, Capricorn, then the great one, Aquarius, and then the tails of the swallow, which became the fish in the later Babylonian era. And finally the hired man, which later became Ares. I also want to mention a later set of tablets from around 200 BC, called the Seleucid Zodiac. These beautiful tablets show Jupiter and Mercury depicted as stars, among the constellations Hydra, Leo, Corvus the Crow, and also Virgo. The Egyptians eventually adopted the Mesopotamian Zodiac. But unfortunately, the evolution of Egyptian astronomy is a lot harder to track. And this is because the Mesopotamian tablets often survive the test of time, while Egyptian papyrus generally does not. But we do have two beautiful, although very late, Egyptian zodiacs. The most beautiful one is the Dendera zodiac from the 1st century BC, which was located on the ceiling of a temple, and it is now displayed in Paris in the Louvre. Here in red we see all the 12 constellations of the modern zodiac. We see the crab, the twins, the bull, the ram, the fishes, Aquarius, the goatfish Capricorn, Sagittarius, the scorpion, the scales, the virgin, and finally the lion. And here we see a depiction of the Arthribus zodiac. This from, from even later, from the 2nd century AD. And here we also see all the modern constellations. And there we have it, the discovery of the constellations by the Mesopotamians. Next time we'll discuss an even greater discovery by the Mesopotamians, namely the discovery of the planets. But for now, thanks for watching and if you want to know more about ancient astronomy, or any other topic from world history, then read my book In Search of the Sublime. You can read it completely for free on worldhistorybook.com or you can buy a physical copy on Amazon. See you next time. Bye bye.